Hello everyone out there and welcome to Domini Drew Radio. A great show for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. I am also going to be live on air via Facebook Live. You can connect with me on Facebook at Domini Drew Coaching where I can be reached and a video of this will be available there. So my name is Domini Drew. I'm your host for this hour. I'm a men's relationship coach. I specialize in helping single men attract life partners through personal and relationship coaching. You can find out more about me at uh, on DominiDrew.com on my website. I'm also, as I said, available on Facebook at Domini Drew Coaching. So please feel free to check me out, ask me questions. Um, I really like being a resource for uh, for men in particular. Um, I find that there's not a huge amount of resources available for men in the world right now. Uh, as far as you know, helping with relationships and really, you know, helping to find yourself and 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 things like that. And so I really enjoy being a resource resource for that um, for that demographic. So as I said, I uh, specialize in helping single men attract life partners through personal and relationship coaching. I've been doing that for quite some time. Uh, my background is in is in personal development work, uh, spiritual psychology, etc. And uh, it's end up, you know, the, the results I get are really powerful. They're really um, quite, uh, quite transformative. And that's what I'm really about. I really, um, you know, I've done intensive personal development work for probably about 15 years. And what I've really found is that the, um, the, the efficacy of, of it is, is unlike anything else I've found, unlike therapy, unlike, um, you know, coaching. I, I call the work that I do coaching, but really it's sort of this more intensive personal development approach um, and I take sort of a, a spiritual slant to it okay and the reason why I do that and one of the reasons I get the kind of results that I do is that you know the you are more than just a mental being okay so if you're experiencing a problem and you address it on the mental level that will definitely help but unless it's a mental problem then it won't usually be the entire solution so what I do with my clients is I really take in their entire um, you know who they are as a whole, right? So we work on the mental level, the psychological level, the emotional level, spiritual, energetic, even physical, okay? Because what happens early on in life is we have these experiences that then form these beliefs in our mind. And those beliefs are extremely powerful. They're assumptions about the world, okay? They're not just, um, you know, thoughts or, oh, I really believe that this is gonna happen. You know, that's, that's a thought. But what ends up really happening is that you develop these beliefs which are deeper, okay, much, much deeper, and they actually end up going, you know, showing up on the physical level as well. So I'm a great example of that. I've been doing this work for about 15 years, and my, um, even my physical body is completely different than when I started, okay, completely different from when I started. Um, and so it's been really, uh, really powerful. You know, I didn't get into it to change my physical body, but I certainly hated my physical body and had a lot of struggles with it. And as I worked through all that and sort of developed the self-love, my physical body shifted as well. So it's really, um, it was a, it's a very powerful shift. So, um, so, so that's where I specialize, and that's how I'm able to to really get such powerful results for people, um, for my clients, is that I'm really working on all of these different levels simultaneously. Okay, and that just really accelerates and speeds up the process. So if you'd like to join the conversation with me today, <clears throat> I'd love to have you call in. Um, the number to call is 708-793-7769. And again, that's 708-793-7769. You can also send me questions on Twitter or Instagram on both. I'm at Domini Drew. That's D-O-M-I-N-E-Y, D-R-E-W. And that's on Twitter, on Instagram, and again on Facebook. So I've got a great show for you today. Um, today I'm wanting to take some uh, question and answers, okay? So I put a call out for questions. I got some great responses back. Um, I really want this to be relevant for my listeners. I really want to talk to people about what is really bothering them and, and, and how I can really help in the most sort of um, concentrated way. So I come up with, con with um, you know, I speak to men all day long for... Um, uh, my coaching practice, okay? And so I get a lot of ideas from there. I address a lot of things that I um, that I hear from my clients. But also I really like getting feedback directly from people. You know, I really like um, getting, uh, you know, 
your actual questions. Okay, what is it that you actually want to know? And let me address that. You know, if this is this is about what you need and want. So today, <clears throat> what I've done is I've taken some of those questions that people um, sent in, and uh, I just wrote them all down. I'm just going to address them one by one. Okay. So if you have a question as I'm going, please feel free to comment. Please feel free to reach out. Um, you know, this is this is really about um, answering and answering your questions and, and and bettering your life. That's that's you know why I do what I do. That's what I get to do. So um, so another sort of overview of of what I do. Um, I, I help people see how they're blocking themselves from what they want. Okay, so the process that I use can be used for um, you know it's the same process for women. It's the same process for if you're struggling with money issues. Um, if you are struggling with your physical body, as we spoke about earlier, if you're looking at, um, you know, where to live or your job or your purpose in life or your spirituality or your relationships, these are really about, um, about knowing yourself more, okay? So the clients that I work with tend to experience shifts in a lot of different areas of their life. And the reason for that is because what's changing is them. And what's the common denominator between all the things in their life? It's them, right? We use that example as, um, you know, people who keep having the same relationship over and over again, the same negative relationship. It keeps not working out. It keeps not working out. Um, and they go, I don't know why I'm doing all the right things or I'm, you know, it's the women. So it's <laughs> the women. <laughs> and I go, okay, well, what's the common denominator in all of your past relationships? Like, what is the one thing that without a doubt they have in common. You are, right? You're the one that's creating this over and over and over again. You're making this relationship happen. Something about this is attracting you, so we start there, okay? And when you change yourself, everything starts to shift, and there ends up being, uh, it's quite a powerful, quite a powerful uh, process. Change starts. So, <clears throat> so the first question that I, I wanted to um, uh, to address, and these are just sort of the, kind of the popular ones, that either, either a few people wrote these in um, uh, or something like that, um, how to make a long distance relationship work, okay? Um, this is something that I've had a lot of experience with and actually, um, in fact, I didn't actually have my, own, my first non-long distance relationship until I was probably in my late 20s, um, or some mid-20s, I guess. And so, um, you know, there's a there's a there's a boon in that here. Okay, in this day and age, we have a huge number um, of options for communication. Okay, so it didn't used to be that way, right? Even when I was young, it didn't used to be that way. We didn't have you know all this instant messaging and texting and um, all these things now, which make things a lot easier. Okay, so with the number one thing that I would say with trying to maintain a long distance relationship is um, is to communicate. Okay. Um, it can be really easy to, um, I want to say communicate, but I also want to say communicate in person, okay? Whether that's on Skype um, or on the phone. Um, Skype is really the absolute best, or Google Hangouts, or, you know, whatever it is that you use. But video chatting in general is a really, um, you know, it's, it's pretty much like you're there, okay? And I think that, you know, there's a lot that can happen in texts. There's a lot of um, miscommunications, and there's a lot of, um, you know, I think you said that, and then I didn't hear back, and I don't know what was happening, and all these sorts of unknowns come in, and those little tendrils of unknown that and doubt, okay, that come in, they start to create, start to create doubt, okay? So, you know, if you're here, and you're, you know, you're, uh, uh, your boyfriend is in Spain, um, and then you text him, and he's supposed to call you this time, and he just can't call you, and then he says later that it's fine, and then you think that you're crazy. You know, so, so all of these dynamics start to kind of happen in your head, and I think that this, the secret to maintaining a long-distance relationship um, is really um, about keeping those to a minimum, okay, to a real minimum. Because the more that you, um, that you sort of let things sort of spin out of control, the more uh, insecure that you get, okay? And then these insecurities start to kind of rev and then one builds on another and then you're just in a damn mess. And most of the time it's not based on anything, really, okay? So, um, so video chatting, I would say, do as often as possible. Um, and then, you know, your, your intention, like, 
you know, there, there can be really good reasons why you're in a long-distance relationship. There can also be things that you're prioritizing over your relationship, in which case, what's your priority, right? If you're, you know, you took some really great job or you want to adventure and explore some and you're struggling with a long-distance relationship, it's like, okay, well, what's your priority? What's actually your priority? Um, if, there, if, if it's the relationship, then maybe that needs to be sacrificed or maybe the relationship needs to come along with you or, you know, just sort of play with it. You know, find, find creative solutions to whatever is happening, you know. Um, think of it in a different way. Hmm. This is interesting. Okay, I'm, that's, that's that's interesting. I hadn't thought of it that way. Um, you know, even if you, if you need to be long distance for a period of time, great. Like, how often can you visit? You know, if one person goes to visit you, you know, one month, and then the other person comes the next month, then you sort of even it out. You see, there's always ways to kind of make this a um, to make this a, a a doable thing, a handleable thing. But you know, before all of that, what you really need to start with is being realistic. Okay, so what is possible in that scenario? Um, how often can you see each other? You know, if one person really can't go anywhere, that makes it even harder. Um, but it, it's totally doable, okay? It's absolutely doable. If you can prioritize shortening the time, all right? It's like, okay, I want to get my, my master's and that's away from here and you can't leave your job, so maybe I can do it in a year instead of two. I don't know. You know, maybe you can, you know what I mean? Like, what's your priority? If the priority is the relationship, then okay, great. I still want to go do my master's but maybe I can do it in a year instead of four years or, you know, whatever that may be. Then visiting, okay, figure out how often you can go, how often the other person can go, split it up as best you can. And then, um, you know, from there, um, communicate, okay, communicate well, talk in detail about what's going on, about your feelings, you know, I don't, I don't want to say when in doubt over talk, but sometimes that, that can be a good, that can be a good rule, it kind of depends. So, um, so yeah, so those are some, some tips in getting through long distance relationships. Um, you know, it can be, it can be stressful. It can be painful. Um, staying in contact as much as possible is what I've found that, you know, that works the best. And again, we've got all of these resources now that we didn't used to have. So, you know, if you're in different countries, there's an app called WhatsApp. Okay. Or Viber who, you know, where you can make phone calls and you can send texts and it's all over internet. So it doesn't charge you at all. And it's like, there are a lot of ways to stay in communication now. So, you know, use those, right? Check those out. Okay. So, um, next question. Um, so, <laughs> this, this question I didn't quite understand. It was, how does change relationship status on Facebook? Um, so, I'm assuming it's not like a logistical question, and you're asking me about actual sort of uh, questions on Facebook, um, or w what their sort of relationship status actually indicates. Um, you know, there used to be a lot more fuss made about that when Facebook first came out. Um, fact of the matter is that your relationship is for you, okay? If you're out there sort of trying to broadcast it to the world, it can very easily become the focus, all right? So it's like, oh, I've got a girlfriend. Now I have to tell everybody that I've got a girlfriend. And I want that, I want everybody to know. So if that's your, if that's your default state, you know, that's your, that's your go-to, or that's your partner's go-to, then I would get a little bit curious about that, you know? Um, what is it exactly that they are, what's your intention, okay? Check in with your intention. If your intention is to shout it from the mountaintops and you're very, very happy, you know, I mean, change it. Ultimately, it doesn't matter whether you change it or not. What's important is what is to identify what the intention is behind it, okay? If you're showing off or you're using her as a status symbol or using him as a status symbol, um, then those really will tend to be, you know, those will tend to cause problems, okay? So people can come to, you know, can, can come see it and it can create, you know, I don't know, there's drama and there's he said, she said type of stuff and things like that. And so, um, you know, when you're going public with things or when you're broadcasting your relationship on social media, be conscious, you know, be aware. Um, are you just putting it around so people will see it? Does it make you happier or is it sort of filling a, a kind of hole that you're not, you know, you're not sure about? Um, or is it maybe sort of fluffing up your ego, right? And keeping you from, from really connecting or getting in the way of really connecting, okay? Um, so ego and, and, and love can, you know, they can be right next to each other sometimes. They really can. And that's not a bad thing. 
Um, it's just something to be aware of. Okay, it's an important thing to be aware of. So, okay, so next question. Um, how to build trust in a relationship? Um, so, so trust is built with uh, a couple of different ingredients. One is time, okay? One is repetition, okay? And one, uh, we can call it loyalty, okay? So if you are, you know, if I get myself in a couple of sticky situations and you're always, you're always there, you're always present, you're, um, you're, you're taking care of me or you're standing your ground or you're being solid and centered regardless of whether or not I am, things like that, that will build trust, okay? So if after, you know, um, you know, I've got, let's say, abandonment issues, but you, when you leave, you tell me, okay, so let's, let's get a scenario here. So uh, a couple is fighting a lot, okay? And let's say that the female has abandonment issues, okay? And the male has, you know, claustrophobia issues, like wants, sort of wants space, okay? And they're having trouble trusting each other because when they fight, he leaves and she feels abandoned and betrayed, okay? And then they fight about it because she doesn't trust him. So she, they're destroying the trust. So then what ends up happening or what an option is, is the, um, you know, the guy there can, you know, when they're fighting and he needs space, okay? And space is an important thing, okay? Men need space, women need space. Um, that's not something to be overlooked. It's really not. That's quite important. And so what you can do is you can meet your needs in a responsible and considerate way. So if you know that your girlfriend has... Um, if you know that you ha that your girlfriend is you know struggles with abandonment issues and that, that triggers her when you leave, then it's still okay to leave. But before you go, I want you to say, you know what, I need some space. I will come back in you know, two hours, okay? And then come the hell back in two hours, okay? Do what you say you're gonna do. All right. Um, this builds trust, okay? You're telling her you're still fulfilling your needs, you're still taking what you need, but you're telling her that you're going to be back and then you're actually back, okay? If you tell her that you're gonna be back and you don't come back, that erodes the trust further. But if you're consistently there, if like you're like, hey, you know what, I need to leave, I will be back. And then you come back. And then the next time you fight, you say, hey, I need to leave, I will be back, and then you're back. And then you fight again, you see what I mean? So every time you're fighting, you're, you're still taking your space, you're still fulfilling your needs, but, but you're saying it in a way that keeps, that's, that's safe for her, okay? Then what happens is she's going to start building trust. It's okay, well, he said he's going to leave, he's done this three times, and he's always come back, so I'm this much nervous, I'm a little bit nervous, okay? But not extremely nervous, I'm not out of my mind with worry. Then 10 times later, you know, she's even calmer. Okay, so that consistency, consistency is what builds trust. Okay, if you're in a, you know, your guy's in a situation with a bunch of beautiful women and is respectful of your relationship, if you're monogamous, then, then, repeat, then repeating that, she will, she will worry less and less. Okay, now if that doesn't happen, if, if, you, if she doesn't worry less and less and she's still sort of holding on to the abandonment issues, that's out of your capacity okay at that point she's holding on to her abandonment issues and you can't do anything you know so so if you have uh, if you ha if you're if you're developing that trust and it's not affecting the relationship and you're acting in your integrity then you need to bring that up and you say okay I, I've, I've never betrayed you there's not there's no trust thing that has ever happened I'm showing you repeatedly that I'm trustworthy at some point, you need to take that in, right? And then hopefully you both have your healers that you go to and you can work that out. So that's what I do with my clients. <laughs> so at that point, there's a time when you go to someone, okay? And you go, hey, my boyfriend has, whatever, never betrayed me, never done anything, um, but I don't trust him. Okay, I just don't trust, okay? And then you work on what's how, what that means for you, okay? You look inward at that point. So... Um, so that's about building trust, okay? Consistency builds trust. Communication builds trust, okay? A lot of, it's the same thing with the texting and the long-distance relationships, a lot of shit gets uh, lost in translation, okay? A lot of stuff gets lost in communication. Um, 
and then we hear one thing, you have to understand that when you speak, the other person does not hear what you just said. They hear something else every single time. Okay? It's either slightly something else or it's way off something else. <laughs> but we all have our entire life experiences. So when you are, um, you know, when you're, uh, you're hearing, okay, you can trust me, you know, someone else is, is, or you're saying you can trust me, someone else is hearing, you know, you have to trust me or I don't, or I won't love you or, you know, why don't you trust me? What's wrong with you? Or you see what I mean? So there's all these sort of little subtle things that are happening. And they're happening all the time in everyone's head. Okay. And it's not bad. It's fine. It is what it is. The important thing is that you know that it's happening. Okay. Cause if you don't know that it's happening, then it's running you. Sometimes I talk about, you know, the work that I do with my clients as uh, taking people out of, out, off of autopilot. Okay. We, we live our lives on autopilot. Right. Um, and, and as you wake up, okay, as you become more aware of what's happening um, in your system, you know, what am I hearing? What, did you say that or is that just what I heard? Um, the more you become aware of that, the more amazing fucking life is. Uh, it's truly all of your defenses start to come down. All of your communication starts to go up. Um, it's, you know, it's, you're more secure, you're more aware, you're um, more attractive to people. People want to be around you. They're drawn to being around you. So all of this incredibly powerful, you know, these incredible powerful transitions um, come up and it ends up being, you know, it's, it's like a whole different world. So um, definitely worthwhile to, um, to, to, to become aware of, of, of what you're doing, okay? And also, you know, a big piece that comes with that is the self-sabotage piece. You know, once you're aware of what you're doing, there's less self-sabotage. Um, and self-sabotage is rampant. It's everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Um, and it's just you blocking yourself from what you want. Again, that's, that's the area in which I work. Um, what are the subtle ways in which you're working against yourself? You tweak those, and boom, you're on a one-track, you know, a one-way track to, to what you want. That's extremely powerful. Okay, uh, next question is, what is a poly relationship? So, <clears throat> poly stands for polyamory, which literally means many loves, okay? Polyamory is a relationship structure which, um, which some people enjoy and some people don't. Um, the relationship structure is basically that you are in a relationship with one person and that person is your primary, okay? That's your primary relationship. And then in addition to that primary relationship, you have multiple other relationships, okay? So you and your um, wife, let's say, have, you know, you have girlfriends and she has boyfriends, that type of thing, okay? Now within that, you know, that's a very uh, broad description and that's intentional because polyamorous relationships can look like a lot of different things. Um, so you could be, you know, you could be in 10 relationships and you know, most people aren't that, but just, I've known people who have had five or six. Um, Lord knows how they had time for all that. <laughs> it can be quite time consuming. Um, but, but what it basically allows you to do is get needs met by other people that your spouse can't necessarily meet. And that's a really powerful thing because, you know, the world has shifted a lot since we developed monogamy um, and marriage and, and decided that was how we wanted to do things. So um, with that has come you know, a lot more people. We, we interact with a huge amount more people than we did even 50 years ago. Huge amount more. Um, we're exposed to a huge amount more. There's a lot more going on in life. So there's all of these um, different um, characteristics which are now um, impacting you know, things like monogamy, okay? So you know, I don't know what the um, infidelity rate was, you know, 500 years ago, but it's pretty goddamn high right, high right now, you know, people are acting on it more, so we see that in the divorce rate, which has skyrocketed even in just the last 50 years, um, and a lot of that is, you know, because it's very difficult to have all of your, your needs met by one person, okay? So what ends up happening is you either go without your needs being met, or you have them met, you meet them outside of your relationship rules, okay? 
So um, there's really, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great option. It's definitely worth exploring, okay? Let me emphasize here that uh, in a polyamorous relationship, every single thing is above board, okay? What I mean by that is it is communicated about and decided upon beforehand. So there's no fine line between polyamory and cheating. You don't come home to your wife and say, hey, I slept with someone else because I want to be polyamorous. Not a thing, okay? <laughs> if the conversation doesn't happen before, then it's, it's out of the rules. Um, polyamory can be a really great way to, again, get, the, get those needs met and you know, explore and adventure and, and have fun. But if you're not taking care of each relationship, if you are not communicating well and um, making sure that person is happy and feeling safe and feeling good, then you're not, that's, that's not it. You're not in polyamory, okay? So don't you know, cheat and then blame it on, on being poly. Uh, another question that I tend to get, which I'll just dovetail off on here, is can you cheat in a polyamorous relationship or in a swinger relationship, open, open relationship? Um, swingers, by the way, vary because when in polyamory, um, there's, there are um, multiple ongoing relationships, okay? So you have a primary ongoing relationship and a secondary ongoing relationship. So you're dating more than one person longer term or married, whatever. Um, uh, an open relationship um, or a swinging relationship, you know, if you're swingers, then you tend to, you only have your one person, but then you go and you have sex with other people, you know, for fun as an enjoyment thing, okay? Um, but it's less sort of relationship-based normally. Um, the open relationship um, is kind of a, a catch-all word, okay? It's like you're, I don't know, you're open. I don't know, we're open. We're open to things. Um, and then a monogamous relationship is, is just the two of you, okay? And it doesn't matter what kind of relationship you have. It matters that you agree on it beforehand and that you're comfortable with it and that you, you know, become, you know, you're, you're, you're acting with integrity with your relationship, whatever it may be. Okay. So, um, so as far as cheating in polyamorous relationships, so by that logic, there can absolutely be cheating within, in polyamorous relationships. Okay. All cheating means is breaking the rules upon which you and your partner have agreed. Okay. So in a traditional monogamous relationship, um, that would be, let's say, kissing someone else, okay, or having sex with someone else, that would break the rules because the, the, the rules were, we're not going to have sex with other people. Okay, great. So if you decide you want to have sex with other people, you either need to not have sex with other people or you need to change the rules. Either way is fine. But see how both are above board, okay? There's no sneaking around. There's no cheating. There's no infidelity. There's no need, okay? Communicate. What do you need? You know? If your partner is not open to communicating, then you need to go see someone together. You need to talk about it. You need to communicate. <laughs> so what ends up happening is that, um, you know, again, you're, you're, you're building trust. So let's say you're in this monogamous relationship, but you're interested in kind of opening up. Great. Have the conversation. You know, have it at a time when you're calm and you're quiet. You can focus and you can, you know, she can express herself safely. And let's talk about concerns. Let's talk about interests and fantasies and all this sort of fun fun, exciting things to do. So, um, so if you're ever breaking a, the, the, the rules that you guys have agreed upon, then that's where infidelity comes in. Okay. That's between being open and being, uh, uh, you know, and cheating. Now, um, within monogamous relationships, of course, the rules still vary widely, right? So you have people who, um, will, you know, um, couples who are fine with, let's say, a, a woman's fine with her husband going out and dancing salsa and dancing with all the women, you know, in the in the salsa club, and that's she's fine with that. Great. Um, that person may or may not still be, um, you know, be okay with that. Another couple would like would never even occur. To me. I know people who are just, you know, their husbands won't let them go salsa dancing, and they said that's actually fine because so she was, you know, bitching about not being able to go salsa dancing, and then she said at some point of the conversation she goes. I was like, that seems, you know, that's, that's a lot. That's a very restricting thing. And she goes, um, she goes, yeah, it's fine. I wouldn't want him, you know, salsa dancing anyway with him, with them either. And so like that was their agreed upon rule, <laughs> right? Okay. So dancing is bad. Okay. Whatever your rules are is perfectly fine. Right. It does not matter, but it does matter that you know what they fucking are. That matters a lot because otherwise, you know, she's going to go on vacation and you're going to go, 
you know, salsa dancing and it turns out that's super duper not okay. So, you know, what, what tends to happen in relationships is these rules just sort of come out. It's like, oh, you know, you were over there flirting with that girl and I can't believe you would do that. Okay, so that's her drawing a line, right? What, what really needs to be said is, it makes me uncomfortable when you flirt with people, you know, right in front of me or, or whatever. But see how that's a specific rule. Now, if I say that to a guy and, you know, with guys, it really helps to be super, super clear, you know? Don't expect them to understand or sort of do these sort of complex things, especially not with important shit like relationship rules. So if you want to set, you know, if, if that, that flirting makes me feel insecure and I don't like it, first of all, I need to work on my own stuff. Why is it that I'm uncomfortable with that? But in the moment, communicate that. You know what, can you just not, can you not do this one thing? It makes me uncomfortable. Boom. If he's, if he's good with that, that's great. If not, that's a conversation to have. Okay? But what a lot of people do is they just, they don't even talk about it. Okay, and then they get in trouble later when he goes salsa dancing and she goes, I can't believe you did that, you're married. And he goes, I didn't know that was not an okay thing to do when you were married. So you sort of trip over these sort of stones and one conversation, one mature, vulnerable conversation early on and boom, you know, it's all settled. It's all, it's all um, established in one go, okay? So, um, so... So, you know, have those talks and, and have the talks about, about monogamy and, and exclusivity as well. You know, you start dating someone, especially in this kind of day and age, it's like dating is kind of, a, you know, tends to be quite casual, especially in the beginning. So if you're, you know, it's like, oh, well, we're just, you know, we're talking. Or we're, we're just going out for drinks. We've been out for drinks a few times. It's like, well, that great. And it's not like you need to talk about exclusivity on the first time you go out with someone. But... It is good to, you know, have that conversation relatively early on, like just to be clear, like, are you expecting us to be exclusive? Am I not expecting to be exclusive? Like, how is this, um, you know, going to work and clarify the hell out of it? Might be a little bit of an awkward conversation to have, certainly doesn't have to be. But if it is, who cares? It's better than, you know, her going and sleeping with someone else because she didn't know that you, that you you know, you thought they were, you guys were dating or, or however that is that works for you, okay? So that's a little bit about um, uh, polyamory and then tangential shit, sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay, so the next question that came in was how to save your relationship. Now this is a very, um, this is a very broad one because obviously it depends what the issues are, right? Yes, pre-negotiation, exactly, thank you for that. So, um, so how to save your relationship. So what matters about this, um, obviously it, it depends, you know, what state you're in, if you're, if you're married, if there are kids involved. Um, I, I don't ever really condone leaving small children. Um, I think that by having small children, you, um, you give up that right, okay, to, to do kind of whatever the hell you want for a few years until they're kind of established. That's more my personal opinion than my sort of uh, expertise. Um, but there you have it. Um, but as far as saving a relationship, um, what, what needs to happen is, is self-awareness and brutal self-honesty. Okay. So that is the way to save anything. It's the way to save your career. It's the way to save your, your mental health. It's the way to save, um, your relationship. Okay. So if you're struggling, you know, you're just triggering each other you know, relationships get tough, but the only reason they get tough is because we get triggered by other things. It's, it's rarely what's happening in front of you that is actually the concern or actually the source of the problem. Does that make sense? So, so you, you essentially, um, you know, we, we transfer, it's called transference, okay, in, in, in therapy, which is like, um, I'm the therapist and you're talking to me about, um, your, childhood and you're sort of seeing me as your mother because there's like an authority sort of figure there or an impression. It's not really an authority, but, um, but it's seen that way. Okay. And that's great. Transference is great because then I sit there in the seat and you, you bring me your mother transference and we duke it out. Great. Let's talk about your mother transference. Let's talk about your mother. What, what have we got? Right. So it brings all this stuff up. So to be the type of person who is, is able to look within, okay, and is able to really see what's there, that is the magic to saving a relationship, okay? 
what what got you in the problem in the in problems in the first place usually are you know these transference things. It's like ah, oh, he irritates me so much when he does da 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 da. And it didn't used to happen. Okay. So what does that mean for you? What what do you hear? Remember, we're not hearing what people are saying. We're hearing what we're hearing. Okay. And those are those are two different things. Um, so let me give you an example of that. Um, I was in a uh, session with a healer quite a few years ago, probably over a decade ago. Um, and she said, um, you know, she's an energy healer and we were just sitting there facing each other. And, um, she said, you're very sensitive. Uh, she meant, you know, energetically like that I could pick up on a lot and, and, and that, that was true. Um, and I went, oh, okay. And didn't really, you know, didn't really realize kind of what was happening. I just sort of kind of had a reaction and she sort of sees my reaction and she goes, what did you just hear me say? And I said, you said I was weak. And honest to God, a hundred percent, that's what I heard. So when she says you're sensitive and I hear I'm weak, then the, the, the interaction there was colored. Okay, so what the reason why she asked me what I'd heard is because she saw me, my, my energy shift, right? Because I saw that as a negative thing. And I started going into myself and, you know, all the negative things that, that sort of meant to me in my head. Um, and that wasn't even what was said. Okay? So her bringing my awareness to that in the moment was, ex was profoundly transformative because I was able to see what was happening. I was able to see um, what I had done there. Okay, she pointed it out. This is what I do in my sessions. She pointed it out and said, you know, she, she checked it out with reality. Okay, this, this is the secret to the whole thing. If you're struggling with transference, that you're, you're hearing things that aren't being said um, or you're, being, you're just being triggered a lot, then a lot of that comes from, um, uh, you know, the, then, so excuse me, not where it comes from. The, the way out of that is to check it out with reality. Okay, so... Um, you know, if, if you're, you know, you're feeling like your girlfriend isn't attracted to you or isn't interested in you or, you know, you keep sort of getting a sense like there's something wrong, ask. Absolutely ask, okay? Check it out with reality. You need to know whether or not um, what, you're, what you're experiencing is real. Real, as in outside your brain real, okay? And I'm going to be honest, it's probably 10% or less that is, okay? So we are really very, very much in our, um, in our brains around this, okay? We're very much um, looking at life through our screen, okay? So to, um, to combat that, you need to put it out there. You need to, you know, put, a, put, a, um, put words to it. Ask ask, 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 okay? Seems as though you're upset with me. Are you upset with me? You know, I'm, I'm getting mixed, mixed signals. Are you upset with me? Now, if she's then unable to, um, yes, exactly. If she is, if she's then unable to communicate back, and that's an ongoing thing, then you need to look at whether or not you want to be in that relationship, okay? Because she may not be capable of really communicating clearly. She may not know, or she may not be brave enough, or she may not be secure enough to, um, to really express herself in those ways, to feel safe enough to do that, okay? So, um, but, but this is about you, okay? Everything's always about you. So when you, um, when you check it out with reality, you know, you need to believe the answer, first of all, and you need to Take that as, okay, so I'm hearing one thing, but what she's saying is a different thing. So if you're talking about saving your relationship, um, the first thing is to go into what the real problem is. Get help. Get help to do this. And by the way, by help, I don't mean your fucking friends. Your friends have no fucking clue how to be in relationships. This is, you know, I have this happen all the time. I'll have clients come to me and say, yeah, you know, I talked to my friends about it, and, and they just, you know, because they're single, right, the single guys. And they're like, yeah, they're all in relationships. And they just say that, you know, I need more money. If I had more money, then I'd be able to attract a woman. Huh. 
Okay, that's great advice. Good for you. So that would indicate that no one who doesn't have money is in a happy relationship ever, anywhere. And unless that's true, that's not good advice. So your friends love you and you love your friends and that's fabulous. Um, you know, people, there's a lot of misinformation going on around relationships. There's a lot of information going, you know, misinformation going on about, um, you know, how, how, uh, you know, what women want and what men want and, um, you know, the, the kind of thing that attracts a girl or doesn't attract a girl. It's like, these are just, most of the time they're just made up. Okay. They're just made up or they're based on your friend's experiences. And the problem with that is that your friend's experiences are still seen through their screen. So you're, you're just, you're just, you know, you're just, um, tuning into someone else's distortions, someone else's screen. Okay. This is the way I see life. And so I'm going to tell you to live life according to what I've seen. It's like, but, but what you've seen is not relevant. <laughs> it's really not relevant. It's not objective information unless you've done a lot of work to decipher out what's objective and what isn't. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, and so that's, that's a really, that's a really kind of important thing. So, um, let's see if I need to say more about that. We're on saving. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So the next question that I got was, um, what is an open relationship? Which we already went into a little bit, so I won't go too much into this here. But um, basically, an open relationship is one where you're, um, you're open to sleeping with other people, okay? Or hooking up with other people or making out with other people or however it is that you want to spin, you know, what you do. Um, I'm actually going to need to turn the light on here. Give me just a second. All right. Sorry about that. So, um, oh, open relationship. So open relationship. So, so basically what that means is, yeah, you're open to, you know, including other people in your relationships. Now that can look like absolutely anything. Um, if you'd like to look me up on YouTube, um, I have all of my past episodes there and I had a couple come on my show and talk about their, um, lifestyle and they're in the swinger lifestyle. And that's a great episode. It's a, I think Open Relationships, A How-To is the name of the episode. And it was a really great, um, you know, insider look at, at how they run their very, you know, long-term successful relationship. Um, and so it can look like anything. You know, some people uh, are open to having sex with other people, but only if their partner is there. Some people are open to letting their partner do whatever they want. Some people are, um, you know, just sort of use it as like a, you know, we can do something if we're at a party one time and we feel like it, it's totally up to you. This is, you know, and this is why I like talking about, you know, about poly and open relationships a lot, is it's your relationship, okay? You make it the way you want it to be, all right? If you want it to be just the two of you, then that's what you want in a relationship. If you just want it to be the two of you now, but you're open to something else later, that's okay with your relationship. So it's, it's really just a matter of you finding what works for you. But in order to find what works for you, you have to consider a lot of different options. So if you, if you go, no, monogamy is definitely the way, but monogamy is all you know, then how do you know that you want to be monogamous? If you explore a bunch of different things, it doesn't even mean you need to do it. You could just read about it, you know, study it, open your mind to it, and then if that excites you, then that's your body telling you that something's good about that for you. And if it doesn't excite you, it's not for you. Be monogamous. It's great. Um, I know a few people who are just genuinely monogamous. They've tried other ways and they're not interested and this is just the way they want to live their life. And so there's no, there's no better or worse. There's no way that you should be or your relationship should be either way, okay? Um, what is important is that you find out what works for you so that you're not fitting around, you know, a square peg into a round hole. It sounds a little bit dirtier when you're talking about sex and relationships. So maybe I'll just, like, redo that whole... Um, <laughs> metaphor on that one. But anyway, you know what I mean. So, um, so basically, um, consider your options. Okay. I have a whole, um, uh, segment in my, uh, eight week course, the art of attraction, um, that focuses specifically on, um, you know, alternative desires. Okay. Sexual deviance for lack of a better term. Although 
in the research I've done, which has been considerable because I wrote my master's dissertation on this topic, um, there are so many people that are into it, either swinging, poly, fetish, you know, any of that type of world alternative, quote unquote, desires that they're not really alternative at all. Honestly, if you don't have desire for anything like that, you're kind of alternative. So the term sexual deviance is a misnomer, but the point is that, um, you know, that, that to consider all of those things is very important. Even if you consider it and decide you don't want to do it, totally fine. But open your mind up to it because otherwise you're, um, you're, you're assuming. Oh, well, this is how it does. This is how it goes. I graduate from high school. I go to college. I find I get in a good job. I find a woman and I settle down. I have 2.5 children and then I move to the suburbs and then I die. Which I think is what happens in the suburbs. I'm not really sure. I don't go because they frighten me a little bit. But the point is that um, you're, you're sort of on, again, you're on autopilot. Okay? You're just sort of doing what you think people should do. And that's not a thing. There's nobody outside of you that's, that's judging your life who has a right to um, and, and who wants to, you know, there, there are no brownie points to win. There's nowhere to go. This is a journey. It's just for fun, okay? So find your own way, right? You need to find the way that works for you so that your relationship can last because this is your relationship and no one else's. Okay, so if there are expectations for you to get married, but you and your girlfriend don't want to get married, don't get the hell married. You don't have to do that. There's, there's no need, okay? So it's really important to kind of come back to that, um, that centered place, right, where you're communicating with yourself and you know what it is that you want. So um, next one. Okay, so how to get over a relationship. Um, how to get over a relationship. This is a this is a, a, a tricky thing. There's a lot of letting go that's required after an intense breakup. Um, what actually ends up happening on an energetic level is that you, there are cords that are between you, okay? And those are formed. If you, if you pay attention, I've actually felt them form and I've felt them break. Uh, most people have felt them break because that's the feeling of heartbreak, okay? When you get that sort of just brutally intolerable um, pain when you think of, of, of someone um, that's those cords coming out, okay? And, and when they break or when they're torn, um, the, uh, the energetic cords, then they, um, they cause pain, okay? They're painful. So, um, so getting out of that, so what's, what's really helpful is, is consciously letting go of them, okay? Consciously, um, actively letting go. Even if you're alone in your house and you just speak it out loud and just like, you know, uh, I'm letting this go. I don't want this anymore. I'm letting this go. Do this for a while, okay? Um, another great uh, uh, technique is is to really, um, really lose yourself in your life, okay? Go get hobbies. Go get you know, you play sports. You read books. You um, you know, you're in clubs. Go to meetups. Go meet some new people. Really create a life for yourself that's that's busy and full, and that will help to um, keep you feeling full as that emptiness starts to kind of set in, because that's what you tend to feel, right? You tend to, um, you know, you, have, you go through a breakup, and then you, um, you feel like this huge hole in your life, okay? And, and there is because of how you're, you're used to holding it, right? But life is still as it is, and it's, and it's as it was, and it's, it's great. Um, what's important is that you need to, um, to fill yourself up, okay? Come back to your relationship with yourself is the most important relationship of your entire life, okay? You need to check in with it. Especially when you're hurting, comfort yourself. Comfort yourself. You know, you're, you got your inner child, you know, whatever, is, is really upset and, and you're throwing a tantrum inside on some level and, you know, comfort yourself. Take care of yourself. Okay, self-care is a very important part of, of, of getting over a relationship. So fill your life up, consciously disconnect those cords, Consciously let this person go, and um, and and fill in with self love. Okay, um, distraction, self love, a new purpose. Okay, is all very powerful. So those are my recommendations on that one. Um, how to get out of a toxic relationship? Now this one I won't go too far into detail with because I did a um, 
a whole episode on it. I can't remember what number it is. It's something about um, uh, drama, how to get out of a relationship with drama. Um, a relationship with, uh, a toxic relationship, um, it needs to be ended firmly. And this is what I find that most people miss. It's because they're, um, because they're still engaged in the relationship, right, like the drama, you, you tend to really engage, you tend to really um, come, keep coming back to it, okay? So you're like, I, I know that I need to leave, this is not good for me, but something keeps like holding you there. There needs to be a clean break, okay? And you need to kind of force yourself a little. I don't say that a whole lot, and it's generally not useful information in a lot of situations, but in this one, what you're actually dealing with is an addiction, okay? If you're in a negative, if you're in a bad relationship, you're in a toxic relationship, you are addicted, okay? Because you know something's not good for you, and you do it anyway, right? So there's something there that is um, pulling you in drawing you into that. So, um, so be aware of that, okay? If you had a friend who was on, you know, heroin, and he's like, yeah, no, I've, I've, I've got a, definitely got a problem. Um, I think I'm just going to go down to, like, heroin once a week. Well, there are some things you can't do once a week. I haven't really tried heroin, but I've heard it's one of those things, okay? So if what you need to do is you know, you finally recognize this and you go, okay, great, then you need to cut that shit out of your life, okay? You need to not go over, you need to not have, try and still be friends, you need to not try and have lunch with them, have drinks with them. You, you need to get your system clear of this, okay? I'm talking delete the contact out of your phone, block the number so it can't, you know, I mean, communicate all this beforehand, obviously, if, if you can, like, you know, hey, I, I, need to, I need space, I need you not to call me, we need to be done for a bit, and that's going to be real hard to do. So ask for support if you need to. You know, if you have friends who know that you're in a tough spot and, you know, can help you out, then great, do that, okay? But it really needs to be done firmly. And in one fell swoop is my recommendation. Don't try and keep coming back. You're like, well, I'm going to only see him once a week for a while, and then I'm going to only see him once every two weeks. It's like, is it toxic or not? If it's toxic, why are you putting it in your body? Why are you trying to make your system digest it? It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. It often is made more complicated than that, but it isn't really. Is this, does this serve you or does it not? What's the overall, I just asked this to somebody the other day, what's the overall effect of this relationship? Positive or negative? Okay, and I know I'm oversimplifying. Of course I'm oversimplifying, but that's intentional, okay? Because what really happens, what really helps in those situations is oversimplifying. Well, there's all these things, and he's got my, he's really a friend with my mom, and we're going to get married, and he does really make good eggs, and that's exciting. It's like, great, you're qualifying now. What's the overall effect of the relationship on you? Positive or negative? If it's negative, out. Okay? If it's positive, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. Okay? So just kind of a couple of things to be aware of. So <clears throat> let's do one more. What does a healthy relationship look like? This is a great, um, this is a great question. It's so simple, um, but it's not asked very often. And, um, and it, really, it really wraps up a lot because I think a lot of people, again, we sort of assume we know what that looks like, but do we really? Like who has ever taught us to be in relationships? Right? Like, where did you learn that? You never learned that. It's like having sex. Nobody taught you how to have sex. I mean, you learn about, like, reproduction and stuff like that. But nobody teaches you techniques. Nobody teaches you, you know, how to give a really good blowjob or how to do really good cunnilingus. It's like, you just kind of like, you know, but then you, 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 you do it with a person and you either get feedback that's positive or negative, all this shit's going on, but, like, nobody ever taught you. So, you know, questions like this I think are really great. So what does a healthy relationship look like? A healthy relationship has as much communication as it needs, okay? Um, people are able to stay connected to themselves as well as to each other. Okay, this is a huge one. I could do, I could do an entire show on each of these things that I'm saying, but I've just got a few minutes, so I just want to you know, sort of give you kind of an idea. Um, the communication is very important, okay? The communication is not just between the two of you. It's also with yourself. 
So if you are in good communication with yourself, if you are open with yourself, if you are um, honest with yourself, then that's where the magic comes in, okay? And that's also when you can, when you can suddenly start to be um, honest with others, with your partner, okay? So, um, so there's connection to self, okay? There's, there's the combination of the togetherness and the individual. I'm still a whole person. The whole, my better half, my other half, things like that, a lot of distortion in that, okay? You're not half a person. You're two people who are coin, who are, um, two people who are coming together and making something bigger, right? Yeah, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're hiding things, if you're, you know, exactly, if there's texts that are, you know, if you're skirting around things, then are you in your integrity or are you not? And if you're not, who do you want to be in this moment? It's always your choice. There's no agenda outside of you. Who do you want to be in this moment? Good. Go do it. That's it. Including if you want to be shady. If you want to be shady, go be shady. It's great. Lots of people are shady all the time. Nothing wrong with that. It will have consequences, as will being, you know, staying in your integrity. So it's always, it's always a moment to moment choice, right? So, so yeah, so there's a freedom in a healthy relationship. There's an openness to it. There's a, um, there's a, there's a flow to it. And I think that's a really important thing to, to keep in mind. There's a lot of restricting, restricting a lot of um, setting rules for each other. There's a lot of um, that kind of thing in, in relationships these days. And it's really important to, um, to maintain that, you know, imagine you were in this particular relationship for the rest of your life. How would you feel? Take this one moment, snapshot it, and extend it to the rest of your life. Is that a life well lived? Is this the kind of relationship you want to be in for the rest of your life? If not, why are you in it? Why are you in it for even five minutes? What are you getting out of it? Which part of you is this feeding? Right? A healthy relationship will have flow, it will have joy, it will have not all the time. It'll go up and it'll go up and down. Life happens. It's about how you handle life and how you handle yourself and each other. That's what will really constitute a healthy relationship. Okay. So it's been really, really great answering your questions today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll be on next week. I'll have another great topic for you. Please continue to um, send in your questions. I would love to answer them. So if you have any questions about relationships, about dating, about being single, about being male, being female, whatever it is, feel free to contact me, Dominique Drew Coaching. And I look forward to hearing from you. Take very good care, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.